Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this evening, two charged with robbery after relieving man of iPhone. Two Kingston men are to face the courts after allegedly robbing a man of his iPhone valued at over $100,000. Charged with a robbery with aggravation are 20-year-old David Edmondson of 8th Street, Kingston 12, and 22-year-old Tyrese Adlam, otherwise called Moby, of Beachwood Avenue, Kingston 5. Reports from the Halfway Tree Police are that about 12 p.m. on Sunday, a man was walking along Hope Road when Adlam and Edmondson, reportedly armed with machetes, approached him from behind and proceeded to rob him. It is alleged that they made their escape in the area, but was subsequently apprehended by a lawman in the area. They were later pointed out and the charges were laid. Bankers Association wants the police to intensify crackdown on ABM vandals. The Jamaica Bankers Association has called for the police high command to intensify its crackdown on hoodlums who have been vandalizing automated banking machines. This follows the theft of a national commercial bank ABM in Longville Park, Clarendon on the weekend. The news was informed that the hoodlums also attacked and vandalized a Jamaica National ABM in Clarendon on the night of Hurricane Barry last Wednesday. The news was informed that the thieves only got $26,000 from the vault of the NCB machine, which was later recovered in the Sandy Bay area. In an interview with the news on Monday afternoon, President of Jamaica Bankers Association, Audrey Togwell Henry, warned that the surge in vandalism will affect the services to banking customers. Um, at least one of our member institutions hit with a uh, robbery and attempted robbery of an ABS. So we are calling on all stakeholders to support us in managing the issues of crime and the impact that that issue is having on our ability to serve our clients. When we have ATMs at risk, we have to shut those ATMs down. We have to remove the cash from those ATMs. And for as long as the risk exists, that criminal element will be attacking ATMs in these troubled areas and these remote areas. We will have no option but to remove the cash. And so our clients and the Jamaican public will be impacted if they cannot access ABM services in these remote areas. So I'm calling on our stakeholders to work with the industry to contain criminality in the country. Maurice calls for special help for people whose houses were damaged by burial. Opposition spokesman on housing and sustainable living, Senator Professor Floyd Morris, is calling for the government to establish special measures to assist the Jamaicans whose houses have been left devastated by hurricane burial. Senator Morris argues that the government needs to establish special measures to assist the individuals whose houses were extensively damaged in Clarendon, Manchester and St. Elizabeth. He adds that Hurricane Barrel hit Jamaica at a time when citizens have been under severe economic stress. Professor Morris says that the damage to their homes adds another level of stress. He is urging the government to do all it can to assist the people during these difficult moments. Professor Morris, however, warns that the process should not be political and that the assessment and the distribution of housing benefits must be fair and transparent. Water was in St. Elizabeth continue following hurricane burial. There has been an uptick in private water trucking services in St. Elizabeth since last Wednesday following the disruption in water and electricity distribution systems caused by hurricane burial. The Jamaica Public Service Company and the National Water Commission have said the badly affected southern parishes, including St. Elizabeth, will be without water and electricity for some time. At the last update on Monday morning, JPS said it had restored the power to 78% of customers, while the NWC on Sunday said that the restoration of power has assisted the company to reactivate its water supply systems in several parishes. The news visited a water station in Santa Cruz where truck operators were lined up waiting their turn for refills. Persons with containers of varying sizes were also on the premises. The independent truck drivers who source water from a well in Santa Cruz 
said that the situation is dire as the demand outweighs the supply. They added that the wait time is longer than usual as the business community is also being served. It is absolutely very hectic, very hectic because on the time we have over about 30 trucks or more lined up to get water, you know, so it's really heavy you now. Can you service all the customers for per day? No, we charge to all of them per day because it's too much and we charge it full as fast as we don't full because we have to line up. So it takes a while before we can full to go back to it. Tell me how the conscience since Wednesday? Since Wednesday, man, the worst man by about 10 man. 10 times, man. Because I'm mean, yeah, here to see people park up on my gate because the phone system down. One reach to me. And we take hours to load. You can't get more than two chip a day right now. So people still have to be aware. We want water. Uh -huh. You everything mash up. Then when we yard, every banana tree gone. The GN want clean. Most of all, the GN need to clean. The other the trees them blow down down here. See that we not have no water, so we can't get the water. The no light cannot get to work from last six o'clock. Never work me to work again. So no money, not not all. No one help. Man shot and injured after leaving funeral in Saint Catherine. A 24-year-old man remained in hospital after he was shot and injured by gunmen while returning from a funeral in St. Catherine on Sunday. The victim had reportedly just left the burial of a friend in St. Catherine about 5 p.m. when a motorcycle approached him at a stoplight along St. John's Road, Spanish Town. He was fired upon by the occupants of the motorcycle and was hit in the lower back and legs. The occupants of the motorbike sped away. The man was assisted to hospital where he was admitted. It is understood that the funeral attended by the victim was for another gunshot victim, Marcus Bailey, a resident of Majestic Gardens, Kingston 11. The police have not stated a motive for the shooting. Detectives from the Spanish Town Criminal Investigations branch are probing the matter. Paulwell accuses GPS of focusing on the easy task calls for urgency in electricity restoration. Opposition spokesperson on energy and climate change, Philip Polwell, has accused the Jamaica Public Service Company of focusing on easy tasks as it carries out the restoration efforts across the island following the passage of Hurricane Beryl. Polwell had recently highlighted the need for urgency in restoring electricity across the island following the disruption However, he said in a release on Monday that it is evident that the utility company has not begun the more complex stages of the restoration process. It is clear that the JPS Co. is focusing on the easy task and has yet to commence the heavy lifting part of the restoration effort. It is apparent that they lack the necessary personnel and resources to efficiently restore electricity to our communities. This prolonged delay is not only inconvenient, but also detrimental to the economic well-being of our nation, Polwell said. He further stressed that the delay in restoring electricity to affected areas is having a financial impact on residents. Many supermarkets and wholesalers have suffered significant losses, amounting to millions of dollars, due to spoilages caused by the prolonged power outages. I am also very concerned about the fisherfolk in our coastal areas who cannot fish to earn a living without electricity because they need to chill their catch until sale. It is imperative that the JPS co accelerates its restoration efforts and allocates the required human resources and equipment to swiftly address the situation, he stated. Paulwell reiterated his call for urgency, adding that JPS co should prioritize the restoration of electricity to all affected areas across the island promptly. He also urged the utility company to ensure transparency and accountability in their operations as they work towards resolving the ongoing challenges. Thank you everyone for watching. See you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another news update.